So why do people watch TV on their RV real quick first? I know a lot of people don't. That's but, okay. Yeah, but you know, if you're just relaxing, if you're out all day and you come back, a lot of times we like to watch it outside if we have the campfire going. Days like today are perfect. So we're here camping today and we gotta show you. It's, it's, it's pretty terrible that. It's Memorial Day weekend. Second one in a row that it's like rainy and super crappy out. It says the second year in a row that we were getting rained out on Memorial Day. Right, so guess what? We're gonna watch some NASCAR on TV. Yeah. And then the other thing is like, I know for us, we don't watch TV at home. So when we come out in the RV and we're relaxing a bit, we actually get to watch TV. Mm -hmm. So we do enjoy it. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about the four ways. So the first one, this is the most common. It's the cheapest, but it really doesn't have very good results. It's gonna be over the air television. Now what is over the air television? It's exactly what I just said. Most most RVs will be equipped with some kind of roof mounted antenna like we have right here. All you're going to do is going to raise that antenna up and you're going to get the free airwave signals that are out there. Now this can be really good. Here are some of the advantages. It's free. The equipment is super cheap. Most of the time it's standard on an RV, but if you want to add it, you're talking about a hundred to 200 bucks with a booster. Super easy. You can get high definition channels. Depends on the area you're in. So the area in right now, I did a scan and uh, we got four channels. <laughs> Both of them are high definition but it's really not four channels it's two channels like 51 1 51 2 but those are actually the same and then like 52 1 52 2 so it's actually two channels that come up as four depending where you're at like if you're close to new york city you're going to get a lot of channels if you're close to a major city you'll get a lot of channels maybe 40 channels but if you're in a campground like we are you're not getting very much here are some other disadvantages of over the air you're limited to the local area station so if we are in cincinnati we're not going to get new york city channels also there's no dvr there's no paid programming like you're not getting ESPN plus and NFL plus and MLB you're not getting any of that you're just getting what is given to you over the air so number two is going to be the campground cable which we've actually used a couple times couple good things about that number one it's not affected by weather hard cable number two a lot of times it's free sometimes I think places will charge a small fee for it but is it really free right? yeah, you're, yeah, you're, right. usually you're, have to go yeah, to a nice private the, campground yeah, to get yeah. it and equipment wise really all you just need is a coax cable Cable. pretty easy to connect to yeah some of the disadvantages again it's not available everywhere if you go to a state park county park right. they, they don't have cable hookup the other thing is your channels are limited there's no paid programming you're at the mercy of whatever the campground wants to get which is usually basic cable and most often the picture like really sucks it's not, it's not high, good yet. yeah it's not <laughs> high definition it's pretty crappy we've used it a couple of times but the only time we'll use it is like if there is no other option then we'll hook up but it's it's really pretty bad and again if it's sunny out we're not watching TV. <laughs> so the third, and this one used to be really common, but it's kind of dwindling. I, I know like the older crowd kind of likes this. We used to have it, not on our RV, but at home. And we've cut it a long time ago. That's going to be satellite TV. Now there's two major players, Dish, Direct TV. We had actually both at home. We sign our with both of them. So what are some advantages of satellite TV? Well, number one, you get a ton of channels. Usually whatever you get at home. So you can have, you know, depending on what packages from the most basic up to the premium, where you have hundreds and hundreds of channels, paid programming, pay-per-view, all that stuff, you can get it right on your RV. Also, depending on where you're at, if you have a shot of the sky, you're good to go. If you're in a place where you're, there's no cellular signal, you can't get internet, you just put that dish up and you are good to go. So what equipment do you need for satellite TV? Well, you obviously need a satellite so you're going to need the actual dish now there's different types of dishes out there you have ones that are roof mounted even broken down to there you have stationary dishes that will only work when your motorhome or rv is stationary and let me just preface this by saying most of the roof mounted dishes they're going to be on motorhomes because they're rather large you also have in motion satellite dishes those will be obviously mounted on motorhomes because you're not going to see a trailer you're not going to watch in motion in a trailer those do exactly what i said you will get signal as you're going in motion down the road now you also have portable ones that will they're kind of like they look like little domes or little dishes you put them right outside your rv when you get to a location you have to physically set those up run a coax cable to your inside of your rv now the second part of that is going to be the actual box itself there's different brands they have uh, different types of boxes basically need like three different things a dish the cable and then the box it is really 
pouring it's coming outside. down. Right yeah. Down. I mean, and look it's outside. It's eleven forty nine, and it looks like you know yeah. we're kind of in the middle of a hurricane too. here. How much is this going to cost you? Well, it's pretty expensive. It's going to go from several hundred dollars up to several thousand dollars, depending on what your setup is. Now, what are some of the disadvantages of Dish? The price is a big disadvantage. You have to not only pay for the equipment, you have to pay for a monthly fee. Also, depending on the weather and the location, that can really affect Dish. So I know at home one of the reasons why we cut the dish off was because when it was really bad weather out, like today, it wouldn't work. If you have a lot of trees overhead, it doesn't work. Snow can affect it. Like I remember yeah, it would snow that. a lot. I had to go out and clean the dish. Now, some of these newer dishes, they have heating elements in them, which would eliminate that. But if you have an older style, you actually physically have to clean that because it won't get a good reception. Some other disadvantages, especially on the roof mounted, they take up a lot of real estate. Some of those dishes are pretty heavy and pretty large. Even if you get a portable one, it's still additional storage. And finally, guys, like it or not, it's kind of a it's kind of it is a dying technology more and more people are cutting cable the dish we haven't used it probably for four years and we do not miss it at all so number four is going to be streaming now we're going to get to the epic part that we mentioned at the beginning of the video in a little bit even that has involved for us yes so what is streaming so streaming is basically using the internet to access entertainment of many kinds internet is really has revolutionized the world how we communicate in everything and uh, we've been using this for since years. we've had an rv yeah. we've yeah. cut the cable off we, we use this all the mm -hmm. time now what is equipment that you need because everything involves hardware mm -hmm. and software right so what do you need to stream well number one you need good internet access four years ago this was certainly could have been an issue but technology has changed right we currently have a modem with cellular service it works really good we have a video on our full hookup right we'll link it above we also did a video about starlink and starlink is an up and coming internet technology. We really think that is how the future is going to go. Basically, Starlink allows you to have high speed internet pretty much anywhere right. where internet wasn't accessible. For us right now, though, it's not really practical, but for many people, it is. So, yeah, so you need internet. The next thing you're going to need is some kind of streaming hardware, right? Mm -hmm. And they made this really easy. I mean, this is like kind of idiot proof. The, pretty I mean, much every new TV out there is a smart TV, mm -hmm. it has streaming capability. You have Roku sticks, you have Fire, Fire sticks. Stick. Those things are 30 or 40 bucks. Yep. Apple TV your laptop, some kind of smart device, anything like that, you can stream TV. So in terms of cost, that can range from a couple hundred dollars to several thousand of dollars. Yeah, and lots of new RVs, they're coming ready with internet accessibility, mm -hmm. modems and all, all that kind of stuff. So what are some of the advantages of streaming TV? Number one, it kind of goes hand in hand. If you're going to stream TV, you're going to have internet in your RV. Mm -hmm. And for many, many people, internet is critical. So it's kind of killing like that bird, right? Like right. killing two birds with one stone. Killing that bird, that's a new one. <laughs> killing two birds with one stone. You're getting your communication abilities of internet, plus now you have your entertainment. What I love is the variety. You're not limited to the two channels that you're getting from over the air. Thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of channels are available, movie options, whatever, whether it's Prime. We're gonna get into mm -hmm. all of this very soon. Now, another big advantage, the equipment is really Animal. light mm -hmm. and small. We have a little modem that is probably a hundredth of a weight of a satellite yeah. dish. We have some streaming equipment that is tiny and it's super portable. With that being said, the ability to upgrade your equipment is very easy, mm -hmm. right? Instead of having to drag out and buy new satellite dishes and other things, I can just swap out a modem in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's super simple. So what are some of the disadvantages of streaming? So number one, you need a reliable internet connection. This will not work unless you have good connectivity. It can also get costly in terms of uh, equipment and data and data the limits are also an issue. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit more about data. Data plans, that is a big deal. I know mm -hmm. I mentioned Starlink, that's $135 a month. There's not many unlimited ones, but the ones that are through third parties can be upwards of $200 a month. So that can be quite expensive. Finally, there's going to be the cost of actual streaming services. So Netflix, Hulu, Sling, whatever you choose to get, there is a cost associated with that small mo monthly cost, but they can build up if you have multiple ones. Let us know in the comments below, do you even watch TV on your RV? If you do, what do you use? Have you ever heard of an Android TV super box? And is it something you'd be interested in? Put it in the comments below. And from Izzy and myself, it's the journey of a lifetime. We'll see you on the road.